Hi guys and welcome back to a new video with the Omega Enthusiast. This will be episode 3 of my personal 30T2 watch collection. While I have been collecting vintage Omega watches for at least 2 decades, their 1940s 30mm model are probably my favorite. By that, I am referring to Omega watches that carries the caliber 30, 30T1, 30T2, and 30T2 RG movement. I will not go through the technical detail for the first 20 pieces since you can learn more about them watching episode 1 and 2, link in the description box below. For this episode, I will go through 10 more pieces that you guys have not yet seen from episode 1 and 2. But before we get started, let us run through the previous 20 pieces. Throughout the 1940s, Omega made many case models that use it the, their 30mm caliber. They are fitted in 32mm to 38mm case diameter. My favorite are their 35mm case size. Omega made many case models, some of which I have only seen in photos or in someone else's personal collection. I do not know the exact amount of case model that houses the 30mm caliber, but I can tell you that Omega made many dials and hands variation for each model that exists. That said, some of these models are made in limited quantity or for a certain market only. To collect them all is very much impossible to achieve. So my collection of 30 different pieces may only show a fraction of what is out there that houses the 30mm series caliber, but that is all part of the fun as a collector. I hope you guys will watch through the entire video and comment below which of the following 30 pieces is your favorite. Enjoy for now, until we get to watch number 21, I will begin to provide a short description for each.
Watch number 21, which is the first piece that I will introduce in episode 3. This is an Omega CK2085 case model in full solid stainless steel. The case diameter measures 33mm excluding the crown by 38mm from lug tip to lug tip. The movement inside this watch is a caliber 30 and it dates to the year 1940. It has a snap-on case back and easy spring bar release hole on the lugs. Really like the two-tone dial with the large sub-dial. Watch number 22 is an Omega case model CK2271. This one dates to 1943 according to its movement serial number. It is also in full solid stainless steel. The movement is an Omega caliber 30T2. Case diameter is 35mm excluding the crown by 42mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case has a removable bezel and a snap-on case back. Since it's a fab squeeze on the dial, this indicates the watch was originally delivered to the French market. Watch number 23 is an Omega case model CK2272. This one dates to 1947 and was delivered to the Brazilian market. It has a rare Teddington yellow star on the dial. To learn more about it, click on the link above. This model is very similar to the previous, however, the case lugs on a CK2271 will be thinner compared to a CK2272. Case diameter on this piece is also 35mm and houses a caliber 30T2 movement. Watch number 24 is under the case model OT2180. This case model is one of the last to house the 30T2 movement dating to 1949. The case is made of solid 18K gold. This case design may remind some of you of the modern day Nomos Tangente model. Simple and elegant golden dial. The case diameter on this piece measures 35mm by 42mm from lug tip to lug tip. There are also a 32.5mm and a 37.5mm diameter version of the, the same case design. Watch number 25 is the 32.5mm case diameter version of the previous piece, and this one is under the case model CK2099, dating all the way back to 1939. 1939 is also the first year when Omega first introduced it the 30mm caliber. The movement inside this watch is a caliber 30. I bought this watch without a second thought when I saw this dial. The 37mm version would date to some, sometime in the early 1940s. Watch number 26 is quite similar to the previous piece. Unfortunately, I would need to order the extract from Omega for this one in order to find out the CK model number. This one dates to 1940s and takes a caliber 30T2 movement. This is the 32.5mm diameter version of watch number 3. Sadly, I cloth polished the hands and it took away the original copper tone layer. Uh, by the way, if you guys recognize this case model, do leave me a comment below. That would be much appreciated. Watch number 27 is a special 30T2 Omega watch. This is the center second version of the Omega Souverain under the case model CK2425. 99% of the time when you see someone with a Souverain watch, it will be the small second version. I am unsure why Omega made so many of the small second version and very little of this version. The case diameter uh, on this one is 35mm excluding the crown by 42mm from lug tip to lug tip. This piece dates to 1944. Watch number 28 will be the small second version Omega 30T2 Souverain watch under the case model CK2400. To learn more about this case model, click on the link above. What I like about this piece are the broad radium L indexes and the broad syringe type hands. Case diameter is also 35mm excluding the crown. Souverain models originally comes with the unsigned crown. Watch number 29 dates to 1947 and it's under the case model CK2214. This one is made of solid stainless steel and has a case diameter of 32.5mm excluding the crown by 39mm from lug tip to lug tip. The case lugs do not take spring bar since they are Y type lugs. The one piece strap is handmade and slide into the lugs. The last piece that I have is this 1942 Omega 30T2 under the case model CK2169. There are three similar small second 30T2 case model that confuses a lot of collectors. I've made a separate video to explain the differences. Click on the link above. One thing I must point out is that 
A dial of a watch does not always have to be pristine to enjoy it. As long as the aged dial is very well balanced, that would be exceptional to me. That's the end of this video. Hope it was entertaining to watch. Please support this channel on my Patreon account. If you have any special questions such as topic related to pricing or how to tell whether a watch dial has been refinished or not, message me on Patreon about them. Do not forget to subscribe and hit on that thumbs up button below. If you, have, if you are looking to purchase a professionally serviced vintage Omega watch, website link is in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.